A never-ending desire and a never-ending wound from a past will forever bring despair to a person's life. Uh, this is still the raw page of Toriko manga and I do not think I will get too many views but I will still bring you a short version of this chapter from another side that I had. It's like uh, the flashback has ended and Midora mentions the only way when the wound in his heart is healed is because when he, it's only when he eats. Similar to how humans need to eat to feel a little more happy. But, um, and, uh, but uh, Ichiro only says that Midora is a slave to his never-ending appetite which Midora do not deny. Then Midora unleashes his intimidation, which seems to be... How do you say this? A hawk demon? Uh, it looks like a hawk with fangs and teeth and all that stuff. I actually suspected him to be a tiger or whatever. <laughs> but no, it's a hawk demon or whatever. And uh, either way, they fight again. And this time, Midora is serious. His tongue is faster. He activates then also something called mirror ne neurons. Something like uh, mimicry cells. Uh, uh, he uses some kind of nerve cells in the brain. And with the and with this power, he uh, somehow disappears, so to speak. He's making himself into darkness, which is actually... Also, how he began to search for uh, m for Akashi's full course menu because he was simply making a darkness. He punches a hole through Ichiru, uh, and despite Ichiru's food immersion, who he cannot heal from these wounds. He then falls to his on his back. As Ichiru looks up, he sees that his little brother is crying, but not on, but not because of that he has to kill his brother it's because he's hungry and then we see also why Ichiru spared Midora all those years ago it wasn't only because they were family it's because when Ichiru had be be beaten Mi Midora he was crying just as he is now saying that he's hungry that he cannot that he wanted that in his final moments Ichiru just says that all that Midra really wanted wasn't just food, it was some a food. Well, how do you? It was almost like food. It was to satisfy his love. I mean, he wanted to satisfy himself for his desire to have a family. And with that words, Midra punches one more time on Ichiru. The IGO president appears to have to be dead. Midora see one last flashback of the time he has a happy family and his adopted mother. His intimidation then unleashes this the scream of the power that we saw many year, many times ago. As he said in a, a poetic sense, the devil's roar will turn into meteors that just like spice that will sprinkle onto a human world. And with that, the intimidation roar out sparkles that became meteors, falling on the human world those many chapters ago. Despair has won. I actually thought this chapter would be something like Ichiro saying that my sons will carry out my deed, but now, now everything has ended. And now I just simply wish that we will see what happened to the survivors! IGO is finished. Neo will enter Gourmet World. Yoa, we still have not figured out if Yoa really is the Frost or just a manif manifestation of Frost's corpse. Uh, but, if, but I think Yoa will use that to its advantage. If Yoa has the face of Frost, so that maybe that will manipulate Midora. And Midora is has really been turned out to be the tragic villain. Slave to his appetite and his anger for his life. And for the despair of losing his adopted mother and, the, and one of the first who showed him love. The four heavenly kings I want, uh, are beaten and Komatsu is kidnapped by Starjun. Just how will this be? Oh and yeah... 
with Ijo completely destroyed in the human world, this is truly the most darkest and saddest historical chapter of all time. Or yet, <sighs> next chapter will decide if there's still hope. Please, if you have watched, comment.